should be the recording. I'm dropping in and out of it. I'll receive it. So I'll call back in and get it Perfect. I can see that the recording has started, so we can get on with it. All right. So this is the uh, February 2022 DSC Community Call. And welcome, everyone. I think that's the first of this year. And um, there's a few news, and then I want to give you some news of uh, of what's going to happen. So what are we going to do today? Um, in the meantime, if someone can accept people in, that's perfect. I won't be able to look at yeah, those things. I know that. So today I've got a few notes I'd like to cover. Um, there's a few informations that would be maybe interesting to you. Uh, some of the DSC community activity update. Uh, we will see what happened and not too much. You know, it was Christmas uh, since the last time. And then uh, we are trying a different way of doing the call for speakers. So uh, we, uh, we use Sessionize and I will send you the link. I want to show you um, how you can uh, submit something. And then uh, upcoming talks. So there's a few conferences that are happening uh, in April and in June. Uh, I just want to show you as far as we know at development, um, what are the talks coming? And then I want to give you a quick demo of Sampler uh, DSC pipeline, which is um, which is a module that uh, we've created to apply the same thing with Sampler, but for a DSC pipeline and the common task, no, sorry, the DSC workshop that is also in the DSC community uh, organization on GitHub uh, uses that now, I believe, and we can ask later uh, Raymond to confirm. So the few notes. Uh, so you, the first thing is last time we had an issue with the DSC community website, uh, the pipeline wasn't working, so we couldn't update the website on the next calls and things. All of this has been fixed twice actually by Johan, but then uh, that's working now. So the website should be updated on if you do pull request and things like this, you can have the updates. So uh, we will make sure um, things are updated now. Um, Sessionize. So uh, we, you know that the format for the DSC community call, we go through the news, we open the discussion to everyone. If you have any questions, anything you can add to the agenda or you can you know raise your hand and then just say, hey, uh, I have a question, and then we can discuss it. Uh, but uh, usually we want to have a presentation of something DSC related. Doesn't have to be pure DSC, but anything PowerShell DSC related. Um, after that, um, yeah, PSC, uh, sorry, PS Gallery API keys, some have expired for some modules. So if you see deployment issue, um, I'm working on it, so I'm renewing them on updating all the pipelines, at least the one I know of. Um, if you have some issues and they're urgent, just ping me on uh, Slack or Discord, and I will uh, make sure I address them uh, in priorities. Um, if you have a module which is using Sampler um, on, 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 with the pipeline on Azure DevOps, make sure that the images that you use, so sometimes we use uh, Ubuntu dash um, 16.04 that there yeah, used to be one we were using. I think that one is deprecated, so your build will fail. And then uh, there might be some Windows one as well that are deprecated. So have an eye on your um, Azure pipelines.yaml and make sure you are using uh, whatever Ubuntu latest or something like this. And I will show you some more information on that. And uh, similarly, the Git version task should be switched to the net tool install into uh, so actually it's .NET tool install. I will uh, show you the details. And um, oh yeah, just a quick news. There's um, so the PowerShell team. Um, they've been if you follow the PowerShell. Uh, community calls, and I believe the next one is tomorrow. Um, they've started creating these uh, work groups, the, the working group, and they invite people from the community that can help with maintaining the repository, uh, do the triage of the task and discuss maybe some of the things. So there's uh, one working group for DSC, and I've been invited as along with uh, Michael. Michael is here, around. Michael Lombardi. No, he's not there, so never mind. But he, he is usually is there, so next time he's around, I will make sure that he says hi. Um, but uh, so two of us have been invited on, and we, we're still waiting to discuss uh, with the uh, PowerShell Teams PM 
you know what we're going to do, what we need to discuss, and what can happen around the partial DSC. So if you have anything that you want us to, you know, feedback to the partial team directly, obviously as usual, let us know. Okay, so the first thing is uh, session is um, I'm doing a presentation these times, but I would love and I would prefer that someone, one of you, uh, do these kind of presentations. Uh, we had Raymond before. We had different people doing it, so. Uh, feel free to go on to this page, so sessionize.com slash dsc-community, and then you can uh, submit sessions, and it doesn't have to be a long session. It can be 20 minutes, just a demo. Maybe it's something that you want to discuss, so you would do a quick demo and say, okay, I'm up there. What should I do next? And then we can uh, we can discuss these kind of things. So go and sessionize. You can add uh, your sessions, create new sessions, and that's a screenshot of what it looks when I'm logged in in Sessionize. Um, you can see in the planned future dates around here, you have the next one. So 23rd of March is the next one. Oh, the <coughs> Sorry. And then the next ones are uh, April 4th and so on and so on. So you in the notes, you, there's a section where you have the notes and you can say, you know, if there's one that works better for you, make sure you let us know so then we can make sure um, we can arrange that for you. OK, so the updates uh, releases. These are the DSC uh, resource modules that have been released. So S channel DSC, I don't know if your is around. Nope. Uh, they've been somewhere going on external DSC, Config Manager, CBDSC, and SharePoint DSC. All of them add, it looks like they add, um, so the Config Manager and the SharePoint one add major updates. Um, so make sure, uh, be careful of the breaking changes and double check the change log if you're using them. And uh, their pre preview releases on SQL Server DSC and SharePoint DSC. So a few on SharePoint DSC actually. Uh, tooling releases, uh, there's actually one more now, but um, uh, Sampler has been updated. It's uh, minor updates, some bug fixes, and then updates on the uh, templates, mainly around um, what I we just, what I said about the .NET tool installed for Git version. And uh, some updates for GitHub tasks, and there's probably more to come around Sampler and Sampler GitHub tasks. And uh, the doc generator has been updated. What what's the change in doc generator? Is it only bug fixes, Johan? Uh, I don't remember. I, I will double check. I, th I think it was I think it was bug fixes only, so not nothing too major. Um, and yes, it is this. Okay, so what's coming in terms of DSC content? So as you know, uh, it's been two years without any physical conference, as far as I know. And um, there's two major events coming up. Uh, someone trying to talk and say something? No. Okay, never mind. Um, if you, yeah, if you want to say something, just just let us know. Maybe just you know you can click on uh, raise your hand, and then we'll see, and we can invite you to speak and unmute. Uh, but uh, there's the PowerShell DevOps Global Summit uh, in Bellevue, on April 25th and 28th. Um, and there's PSCon for you 2022 in June 2023 in Vienna, Austria. So two major events are back in person. Um, the sessions are mostly up, um, updated on the on the on the respective web page. So feel free to browse powershell.org/summit and psconf.eu, and then you should be able to see the uh, session schedule. Um, not comp I know, so I'm a co-organizer for PS Confu, so I know not all of them are already there. There's missing about seven-ish uh, are missing, and they will be updated in the coming week, and that's when we will probably announce it. So probably next week. Um, so let's go a bit further. So uh, for uh, yeah, go ahead. recap on uh, on the doc generator. It was Yorick uh, that sent in the changes for the sidebar and footer, uh, so they are not uh, replaced. Oh, true. Oh, yes. If, so when if uh, Light SharePoint DC is using uh, custom side uh, footer and sidebar. Okay. So when you create your uh, your documentation wiki page, and then you have the you have the sidebar, and then you have some information there that allows you to keep that and not always, you know, overwrite what you created. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
So um, for Summit, I just went through the agenda. I believe it's up to date and they have almost all the sessions, not all. I, I know there's um, at least three missing that's going to come up soon. Um, but uh, there will be, I will do one which is writing DSC resource for Azure Guest Configuration for Linux. So uh, that's something that you mostly know how to do is just some of the specifics, maybe how you want to test it, how you want to write, you know, class based resource, um, what's needed for guest configuration and how to test it for Linux. And then there's the DSC project blueprint um, by Raymond, who's around here and uh, is going to present that one at the uh, PowerShell DevOps Global Summit. So um, we will be in the US in April. Yay, it's been how many? Three years? Last time I was in the US, something like this, a long time. So uh, PS Configure, there's uh, a few more sessions. So there's Azure PC S configuration by uh, Yannick Ring. Um, that's Cloud Edition of DSC. So he's going to go through. You can look at the abstract actually on the PS Configure website. Um, uh, same for the other ones uh, before for the um, for the Global Summit website. And then again, the DSC project blueprint by Raymond. He's going to do more demos, different demos, probably different content, slightly different content, but the same principles. And uh, Bartek is going to, we already, already presented once uh, in the DSC um, community calls, how to write class-based DSC resource, you know, things to think about and, and what to do. So he's going to do a proper full-length session uh, at the PS Configure. And then um, also one which is probably something that people in this call would know is the end-to-end -end process of building an HQRM DSC resource module by Ryan Yates. So it's the, the resource module that we usually discuss, uh, how they're created, how do you start, how do you release, um, how do you make sure the HQRM, so what are the things to do, how to run the HQRM tests and this kind of things. And then PowerShell DSC package management with Chocolatey from Paul Broadwith. Um, he's one of the Chocolatey guy and um, is going to show, I guess, the C Choco um, DSC resources. So that's the sessions coming up um, for those two uh, big events. Um, the tickets are for sale already. So feel free to grab your tickets. If you have questions uh, for PSConf EU 2022, you can ask me. Uh, for PowerShell DevOps Global Summit, best is to ask uh, James Petty or, yeah, probably James, James is the right person to talk to. So usually you can find us, any of us, on, um, on the Slack or um, Discord. Uh, I'm on the DSC one, James. He's probably around, so try to find him, James Petty. Uh, otherwise, send him an email or on Twitter. Twitter is the easiest as well. Um, yeah, that's good. All right. Do you have any questions before I start going through these, uh, the DSC pipeline, uh, sampler DSC pipeline example? Everything's clear? No questions about the events or something like this? I just put it there just so that I don't forget at the very end. The next call is going to be in five weeks instead of six because we just had to uh, postpone this event, well, this DSC community call. All righty, um, let me just bring my VS Code. And on the right window, that would help. Oh, that's the, oh yeah, I wanted to show you this uh, while I'm waiting. So DSC community call, uh, DSC community website is back online. So you can see if you go to community calls and then every time we update this one, sometimes a bit late, but usually we do. Uh, when we get to this, if there's anything you want to discuss, you can just create a pull request so that uh, it's added to this agenda. Um, that makes sure that we don't forget your question and then we can address and even prepare a little bit in advance. Uh, so you see you have just submitted a pull request to this file. So you click there and then that shows you the source of this file. And then you can do a pull request for this and add anything to the agenda. And then we usually say discuss or we just approve. And then that's going to be uh, for the agenda of the next call. Um, so this is the page, the sessionized page I was mentioning. And there's some information. So remember, it's like 10 minutes or 60 minutes. Doesn't matter. It's one of, you know, in between. Usually we don't really have 60 minutes. Um, 
we have a bit less because we do these news before. But um, you know, 30 minutes is is a good time to aim for. But if you do 10 minutes, that's perfectly perfectly fine. Just make sure you you tell us roughly how long it's going to take. So then, if you are doing the 10 minutes, we will get someone else as well. PS come for you. So that's the website. Um, if you want to go, you can scroll down. You can get the tickets here, and then you have the, the session schedules, which is there. There's just a few which are not published yet, but they will be soon once the speakers confirm. All right. Uh, where's my window? I just restarted, so I have all of this thing. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Let me make this a bit bigger maybe for you. There we go. So if you are working with the DSC community, you should be familiar with the sampler type of repository. So what's the sampler type? So sampler is, um, uh, how to call it, what is sampler? sampler? Sampler is a bit of a framework that just has um, like some rules and on, on using lots of dependencies, lots of other modules to uh, to do this stuff. So Sampler is not doing much, except it's just like the glue to pull from other works and then put them together, uh, then orchestrate with uh, invoke build tasks. So when we create a module with Sampler, which is what the DSC community modules are, um, are using. Um, we have different tasks. One is for building, one is for running the test, and that allows you to uh, do something consistent. And for us, it's consistent across many, many repositories. In a very similar, so how does it look like usually? You have your source folder, you have your test folder, um, you have some files as well for your project. Usually you have obviously a readme, changelog, some git version configuration. And um, some the build the build.ps1 is your entry point is where you will invoke any of those tasks and i will show you in a second um, how we do this but then you have a source folder on the test folder and um usually those two folders the source is whatever you edit and that's going to be built at the end is coming from the source folder and the test is once you build something then you will validate that what you've built is what you expect so um this is where the the test will live and that's past the test um, the output is everything which doesn't need to persist and doesn't need to go into Git, into your Git repository. So when you do a Git commit, everything within an output will be uh, um, ignored. That's defining your Git ignore. Then everything in there is just, you know, what you need for the build, but then you can remove this folder completely. So what's in there is all the dependencies and everything that you build. And I'm going to show you this in a second. So the idea with the with the pipeline and, and the sampler pipeline is you create a new from a template or from something you start the, the pipeline, you just have your source file and every dependency is listed into your required modules. So that's all the modules that you will need to pull. So in this case, um, this is a DSC pipeline. The goal of this DSC pipeline is just to build MOF and then you will take those MOF and apply those MOF to the nodes you need. So the idea is being able to manage uh, VMs, and for that we will create the MOFs. You can whatever you need to do with the MOFs doesn't matter. Uh, you can apply it push mode in pull mode using uh, on-prem pull server, or you can use Azure Automation DSC. All of those use MOF, so what you do with the MOF doesn't really matter. But that's how you build the MOF, and then you can hook it up. You know when you have created all those all those artifacts, hook it up to make sure it pushes to your pull server, as an example. So those are all the dependencies for this project. And then I will show you the source code, which is um, YAML files that defines your environment. And this is quite specific, and this is what we've discussed before with Datum. Datum is another module I wrote uh, a while ago. But basically, the, the rough idea is instead of managing configuration scripts, what we want is um, using DSC resources that we are arranging in composite resource. And then we only need to define data, and the data we define it in um, YAML files. And in this case, we have all the nodes elements, and so all the node files would be in the all nodes here. And then you have the different elements, you know, different information for the environments, for the locations, and for the roles. So one machine will have one role, and then it will be probably changing slightly based on the location it's in or the environment it's in. 
So that's the rough idea about um, about datum. But the goal here is you can see there's no PowerShell script. There's only the build. The build is very generic. We never change it. It's the same file that you have here or what you have when you build a module. It's just here to call some tasks. Um, in the sampler project, what defines what's going to be run when you call for a specific task is the build YAML. In this case, um, you can see that when we run the build, it will run the following tasks. And that's not the same tasks at, as when you want to compile a module. So the idea is you, you, are, you change the tasks you want to run when you run the build task. And this one specifically is for uh, building DSC artifacts. And we will see what, what that means. Um, I left the output for now, but it takes time, so I, I don't want to do it first. I will show you when you already have resolved the dependencies. But the first time you run the build.ps1, and I will do it there. Actually, first of all, I want to make sure I'm on WMF 5.1. Uh, so that's not the right window. This is um, uh, do do do. This is the 721 edition, which is not the one I want. So I want to open a new window on because of my configuration. 5.1, the desktop edition. So, so for compiling, especially for compiling on Windows, you know that's the best you can have at the moment, uh, at least for for this for this DSC uh, for, for compiling DSC MOFs that you would use on Windows 5.1 with PowerShell 5.1. So if I run, oops, typo. If I run my build, so I said build is my entry point. Then I have different tasks, and I could do task this to list the task, but I know I want to run my build task, which is defined in my YAML. So you can see my build task will run init, clean, blah, 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 all of those tasks. And those are pre-baked in uh, some DSC modules that are defined in my required modules. But let's just run this and see what happens. So it starts by loading, importing the task it needs, and that's configured in the build YAML. And then it starts running the different tasks we discussed. And then it will go through everything, and then it will start. Uh, in this case, it validates the YAML files to make sure it uh, complies with whatever rules we, we coded into the PESTA tests. Make sure the nodes are defined the way we want. And then it starts compiling some information, and I will go uh, quickly over what's the RSOP. It's the resultant set of policies. So based on all the YAML files, it just say for one specific node, how does the data is merged together? And that shows you the result. And then you see we have no um, DSC configuration scripts because we don't really need one. Um, we basically have one which is generic enough so then it knows how to just look at those YAML files. And it looks at the definition YAML, which tell us what are the different layers of our, of our environments. So the nodes will be at this path. So when we go to node.environment, we can go here. This is the dev environment, and we have a node file. We have the node name, the environment, all the data is based in there. And that defines some things like some specifics for the LCM config. So it's starting the compilation process, and then you will very soon see some, um, some progress on the compilation. So you can see on this one, the source is there. So the source is only about the data. What's important is you have, so you have some baseline, but if you take a web server role as an example, we want to define which configurations or you know, block of configuration that we want to use. And in this case, those are composite resources. And the composite resources will uh, will implement uh, certain um, certain resources and then add them, you know, one after the other, maybe with depends on and the data that we set. So for, let's say, file and folders, we will specify the data for the role under there, items and all of those things. These are the things that we want to define. And that will tell the composite resource, these are the parameters, and then the composite resource will 
generate the resource that needs based on this data. So now, now that we, so the module in this case, the module where those are from is called common tasks and uh, it has loads of composite resources. So you can manage file and folders, web applications, web application pools, and some of those things, registry values and, and so on. So you can see it goes through each composite resource and then you make sure the compilation is going through. And then it starts with the first, um, with the first, uh, node dsc web 01 tries to compose everything and then some some resources are a bit longer than others and especially when you have teams running and then it goes to the next one so what's happening there um it hasn't it hasn't finished everything yet but it will start compiling things in the output so in this case it will start running uh, and creating the muffs so you can see dev and the prodmos they will be created so uh, dsc files 03 and then we will see as they go they will be populated there so it starts by compiling those things and then let's go to uh, dsc file 01 so let me bring up the node file first our node um, it's in dev dsc file 01 and it says the node name is DSC file 01, environment dev, and the role is file server. So we can also bring the file server role. I will put it on the side. Yeah, my computer is getting slower. And um, this is still running for the next one. Okay, so now we can see this configuration as well. So it will, uh, so because this role applies to the DSC file 01 uh, server here, everything in this role will apply. On top of those things in the file folders, it will also add, if anything is defined here, nothing, but you would also add everything in this file and also everything in the environment dev. So if I go in dev just to see if there's anything in there, uh, environment dev, you can see there's some registry values that are specific to this dev environment. So that's how the data is combined together. So if I look at the RSOP for DSC file 01, all the data here is going to be merged. So you have the environment, the description, and everything is merged together. So you have all the data specific to that to that node. You have all the files and folders that we have here, plus the one on the other things. And you have the location, Frankfurt, and the node name. So how does that work under the hood? So that's the DSC. So that's the principle of the DSC workshop. So um, uh, Raymond already um, presented it, I believe, um, at least a few times. Maybe I can't remember if you presented that at uh, the DSC community call. Otherwise, you know what to do. But uh, what has changed is the way before it was not really using sampler. It was using a, um, a previous version of something that looked like sampler that we worked on years ago. So the benefit of using sampler is you now it's the very much the same principle and you don't you only need to have the data so once you understand the data you don't have to touch so much powershell um, it's using composite resource so if you need your custom resources then you will have to develop them they're just almost basic composite resource i said almost because there's a few tips and tricks that you can use to make sure you uh, leverage the composite resource in a certain way so um, some in the required modules here i mentioned common tasks and this one has loads of composite resource. All of those pretty much are composite resources. Um, so as an example, maybe not the best, but as an example, there's the DSC LCM controller and the DSC LCM maintenance windows. So then you can create maintenance windows. You can have DSC respect maintenance windows uh, when it does something. So something that DSC couldn't do, but with some um, funny workarounds, Raymond and, uh, and other people, they managed to uh, work around the limitation of DSC to have those um, maintenance windows. But there's plenty of others. So we were looking at the file and folders one. So let's look at the composite resource. That just looks like a DSC 
uh, configuration script, but it's parameterized, so it's reusable. And you say, hey, those are the items, so you can do it this way. There's other ways you can do it. And then it just goes for each of the items. And then there's uh, that's invoking the resource. In this case, it's the file resource. So instead of having the long form of the file resource, so as an example, the long form would look like a file, a file, and then you start putting you know, your parameters, param1, and then you go value one, you know, that would be how you write a script. But instead of that, we have a function that allows you splatting because you know that uh, DSE resources don't allow splatting natively. So we have written a workaround, I would say, which is the get DSE splatted resource. And that just allows to get just the data that you have, you know, in the YAML file and just splat it to the DSE resource you wanted to have. So obviously, don't change it in there because we only pulling one. So if I delete this whole folder, which actually I'm going to do now. So you see we've compiled and we've compiled everything. I will show you. I will show you what has been compiled. So uh, the MOF has been compiled as we've seen before. So you have all the MOF in there, but you also have the meta MOF. So if you want to configure the LCMs for all of these, all of these machines, the, that's been configured in there. We also have uh, some logs and we have the ASOP as we've seen. So the resultant set of policy, the results for each node of all the data aggregated together. And then here we have the required modules. There's some of the tasks we can run to create even more uh, data. So if I look at my build YAML, we can have some other artifacts. Uh, I run the build, but then I can also run the pack. Usually you don't want to run the pack every time, but if I run my build and then my, ta my task pack, it should do the MOF checksums, and you will see in the MOF here, now we should have the checksums as well that have been created, and that's something that you need when you upload to the uh, to the pull server. And uh, then you can compress the module, another thing that you usually want to push to the pull server, uh, compressed modules, you will see it's compressed, it's a zip file, a zip file made in a certain way, so nothing fancy, but at least it's done for you. And then, uh, and then you take uh, everything together and you create a big zip file. If you want to move it around, it's slightly easier. If you don't want to do that, you just have to say, well, I don't want to do that. And then that's going to skip this task. And then you run the tests. And actually, there's something here, uh, which maybe it could be uh, because I'm running too many things on the machine. No, and, this, is, uh, this has been just fixed. There is a PR. Ah, okay, that has been fixed. Okay, yeah. no big deal. Yeah, I did. That's an that's an old version of the project. I just uh, I just took for this demo today. Okay. Um, but then we have the compressed module. Now this one didn't work because of the issue you just saw. But then otherwise we would have the compressed modules, the meta of the MOF with the checksums, and everything would be there. And. So how does that work? Basically, whenever you use a sample project, same principle applies. You um, let's go and then remove the output folder. So let me just bin those thing. Uh, yes, the integrated console. Then I just want to maybe remove everything. Uh, let's not remove the output folder, just so then you can see it's still there. It's easier to show. Uh, let's remove everything else. So let's assume you just uh, you just git cloned uh, a repository like this repository. What's happening is you start with a fresh terminal. You don't have you don't have anything. So uh, you want to open a PowerShell 5.1 uh, terminal like this one, and then you will say, well, you know, do you do you you know what are my modules? So you say get module, and then if I do a list available. I want to have all of the DSE resources. I'm not going to show because I don't know what crap I have on my machine, but uh, probably I, I don't have all of these things installed. I don't have all of those DSE, um, uh, DSE resources installed on my machine. Or I don't want to install them. I just want to be in this repository. So as you always with sampler, if I do the task build, oops. So if I do the build, what's going to be the A dependencies are missing. So we're running the resolve dependency for you. And everything that is in the required modules PSD1, 
everything in there will be pulled into your output required modules. So if my computer is not too slow, we should start seeing uh, the required modules popping up as they're being downloaded. Yeah, Teams running plus this plus what? Well, uh, yeah, slowing this down a bit. Uh, that's why I didn't want to run this initially. But you know, if you do the Git clone, you don't have to install anything else. That should be able to pull all the different dependencies that you need. And uh, that will compile them off and that will compile everything that you wanted. So the first one should be coming now. Any minute, any second. Any hour. All right, anyway, it is going to start showing that. And then it will go through each of those. There we go. So it's got the first module, which is PSD pan. That's one of the dependencies. And you can see how slow this is. Uh, Maybe I'm on Wi-Fi. That might be why. Anyway, hopefully we will see the first. You see the first um, module has been saved, and then it will keep going through uh, each and every module. So you only started with the source with no script at all, only the build, and then it bootstrapped everything based on your configuration in the build YAML and the required modules you wanted. That's that's the idea. So from the same principle as you have modules with sampler, you can also have uh, DSC pipelines that use that. So then if you look at the DSC workshop, you've got exercise to um, what to do next, you know, how to get started with um, those YAML files, you know, how to understand how they merge together and how to get started adding a new node, uh, implementing a role for this node and then making changes to it. Do you have any question? And you tab our go with. Sorry, Gil, I have a question. Yes, ask away. Yeah. Um, is there uh, is there any upload tasks for uh, in sampler for uploading to Azure Automation or to to a pull server directly? No, and then I'll let uh, Raymond answer that question. Yeah, so Jan Hendrik Peters has uh, created a pull request for the DSC workshop recently because that's not part of the of the actual task. It's more part of the DSC of, of the Azure pipeline. So there, okay. there will be a second Azure pipeline definition that includes the upload to the Azure automation account. And there is also another Azure pipeline definition for doing the same thing in an on-prem environment if you want to redistribute your artifacts to an on-prem pull server. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, because um, if we if I look at the list of uh, the um, the folder where all the artifacts are in, uh, that's um, like ninety percent of that uh, don't belong to a, uh, on uh, on a pull server because that's not needed by the by the by the more files. Or by or by the files, right? I just um, put the link to the PR into the chat. Yeah, I'm not Thank sure. Gail, what do you think? Is it is it um, better to have these kind of deployment tasks in the pipeline definition, or would it also be a good candidate for another task in Sampler? So good question. Um, so. So this, uh, sorry, that's not the right one. So basically, most of the tasks that we've seen, they're coming from this module, which is called sampler.dsc pipeline. So sampler is just sampler and, and the same sampler as we use for modules. The only thing that changes is um, for the DSC pipeline here, what we say is uh, make sure the sampler.dsc pipeline is available. So if I go to the required modules here, you should see uh, sampler DSC pipeline here. And then in this case, I just say, make sure it's a pre-release one. So I always pull the pre-release so then we can test the pre-release that way uh, for this project. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is in the build YAML, we just have to say, well, make sure you import the tasks from sampler.dsc pipeline. So uh, that's the same way as we do for uh, doc generator or some of the things. We just go mo module build tasks, and then we say, make sure the sampler.dsc pipeline module is loaded and import all of those tasks. 
So that's how you can reuse those tasks. So what tasks are passed are part of those things uh, of this um, of this module? Well, the task at the moment they the the core tasks that you have to create and manage the artifact. Deploying, as as Raymond says, deploying um, the task. Uh, deploying the MOF and other artifacts to the pull server or whatever you use, it's a bit more specific to your environment in some ways. You know, uh, if you want to publish that to a UNC path, it would be different. If you want to push that to Azure Automation, that would be a different one. You know, you have different ways you can do this. Should we add those tasks to sampler DSC pipeline? Yes, we can. We just may not, you know, it might be a, just a different task that we don't automatically call. Um, and then you can have gates as well. So maybe some of those uh, tasks would not be part of the same pipeline in one go. You would first build, test, and validate, and then you would push them. You would promote them to your uh, to your prod environment. So we can, and on uh, Jan Hendrik has already created, you know, the the code to do it. Um, whether we want to or not, that's a good question. Probably we can add them, so then it's readily available. But it's easy to do that for Azure Automation DSC. It might be a little bit harder for uh, if you have a non-prem pull server because you may have different ways of getting to your pull server. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Good. Any further question? No, good. Um, I don't have uh, much more to that. If you want me to go to dive a little bit deeper in something else, um, I can answer your questions. So feel free to just hang out and ask the questions. I will have to leave soon because I have another meeting after this one. But um, if that's, if you have no more questions, then uh, thank you very much. And remember the next DSC community call will be on the 23rd of March, 2022. And don't forget about the, uh, even more important, I would say, don't forget about uh, this one. Come on, okay, I'll do this one. About the two events, the two main events coming up in a few months. On that note, if, uh, you have no more questions, we can stop the recording. Please, Dan. Thanks, Dan. No more questions.